This candle smells good. What is that? I know it do. Was that from somebody that came here? Well, I Thank think you. I know what this is. No. Is this a black owned business? Yeah, but yes. You need I to get it. No, bought. I think I bought them oh, from when we were at yeah. the damn battery, that company. Mm -hmm. Cause it, yeah. that looks exactly like it and that shit smells good. You should buy some more. I should, but what is you the brand? I forgot. You want some? Mm -hmm. This is easy. I want a thankful. This is easy. It smells great. I have interest in that company. Oh, you do? Yeah. What's Java. the name of the company for real? Because we good we day bought sense. hella. You said good what? It's good day good six. Day good day since. We had bought several candles, but they all gone now. Now I need more. Say less. I'll make sure you get okay, some. Okay, no, for real. Yeah, they actually really did smell bag. real good. Yeah, if you can make sure. And they we, burn slow. Make sure we have you know somewhere mm -hmm. where we can get them to you safely. And uh, actually, you know what? Oh, <laughs> you're so kind. I you gonna fuck up the set? And I don't want to fuck the set up. No, the set is great. I told you. I, I know the people over there. Look at that. Make sure it's it ain't been lit. I think these are new. He finna give us some hand-me-down candles. No, I'm just Ooh, kidding. this motherfucker mm -hmm. here. Mm -hmm. Smell that. That smells magnificent. Smell that. That smells magnificent. Ooh, fruitful. This mm. smells great. Let me smell that one. No. Let me just smell it. Okay, smell this one. Let me just see. They both smell great, but this one. Damn. This one do smell good. So though. yeah, y'all can have head. those. Thank you. That's on me. Oh, you're amazing. And that'll be the perfect way to bring this in. Look, let me hit this hey. bell and let them know that the black market there we go. is I'm like open. The... Yeah, the when we're walking through the black market, you know how you be walking. You might be done past the little food court, little tennis shoe spot. You might be done walked over there where they sell the tiny homes that you never know. And then you just see two. Two little cute ass sisters sitting over there having what? a corn dog or something, and they just like a corn hey, dog. Hey, hey! I was just visualizing. Okay, it was, you okay. know, no, we were practicing yeah. after we heard about eating bananas. You know, we ate the corn dog. They having a funnel cake. There we go. Clean funnel that up, cause y'all somebody yeah. mama. It's all right. You funnel feel cake. Me? Sorry. They was having a little piece of as sisters though, with a little lemonade and in the neck. You know how this shit be. Snow cone. <laughs> but look, bro, I got a whole bunch of notes about all the great things these ladies have accomplished, but they they told me don't even worry about it. Don't. <laughs> My job gonna be easy today because this is basically what they do, so y'all got it from here, man. I've been working yeah. hard. Go on, tell me. I always let her kick it off. <laughs> well, I'm Andrea Hamilton. It's my sister Erica, and business yeah. partner, mm -hmm. Erica Hamilton. We own a PR marketing agency called Theory Communications. Been in business nine years, y'all. Give it up. Nine long years. Long, hard years. Um, but been doing PR for like 13 years. Yeah. And um, we do sports, entertainment, lifestyle, biopharmaceutical, TV, film. It don't comedy. matter. Hospitality. <laughs> yeah, comedy. comedy. And comedy is come. Actually, we do do comedy because Lil Duval is my client. Come on. Shout, Shout out, out to Duval. Duval. Yeah. So, so yeah. Um, very diverse. Yeah, we kicked off 2014. Um, we're originally from Cleveland, Ohio. How this you feel about Cleveland? Place. Thank you. You do? I appreciate you like that. My, my family's from Cleveland. Oh, my okay, they some the real ones. So many people shit on Cleveland. They some real ones. I mean, Cleveland's a very strange place if you've never been. If you've never been, but honestly, I always tell people it's a great place to raise a family and to, just to learn like street smarts and just to get a hustle about yourself. Yeah. Yeah. Because it's not a lot coming out of there, you know. It's kind of dark. It's kind of gloomy. So you gotta really hustle if you want to get out. Cold as fuck in there. It's, so it cold. does get cold. If, as fuck. if it wasn't for the cold, I think it'd be a whole lot more shit going. On. Yeah, yeah, honestly, yeah. Cleveland it's too got cold. That, the lake, that lake draft. Cold. Yeah, With the but dirty snow. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's no don't, brown. Don't, don't bring me back. Brown. But yeah. yeah, so we were living there, and then um, Andrea moved down here to Atlanta mm -hmm. first. She got accepted to go to, go to SCAD. She was like, "Fuck this shit! I'm yeah. getting off." Oh of yeah, Euclid. no, you know Literally. what? Yeah, made me move. Move. <laughs> I listened <laughs> to I listened to Baby D, uh, East Side versus West Side, and I said, "I gotta move to Atlanta. That shit lit." Word. So and she, that's yeah, why she she moved Atlanta out schools. here. Was going to school mm -hmm. for fashion design. Yeah. So it was just random how we kind of found our way into PR. And I was still in Cleveland just going out to the clubs. That was in the era where like LeBron was still living there playing yeah. for the Cavs. So shit was still lit. Still going to the flats and yeah, shit. The flats. Yeah, the flats. Yeah. Are you, you? 
You look okay, so he's familiar. He's really familiar. Yeah. But um, hmm. so when she moved out here, you know, like I said, I wasn't really doing anything, and I was like, you know what? I'm gonna come visit her, and I never left. Never. Never, never left. Did. I literally, I was working at Dillard's. I had saved. It was like the holiday season. I saved probably like five hundred dollars, and I thought that was enough to move to another to state. To Atlanta. Mm. Yeah. Were the most successful drug dealers in America. I'm telling you. I'm wow. telling you. And it worked out. Mm-hmm. It did. Here we oh, that's a hell of a story. Right there, man. <laughs> I know people who moved to Atlanta with less. Yeah. yeah, for real. Five hundred is a bonus. But see, I gotta say though, she did kind of set me up. She had an apartment already. Yeah. I, she had a room waiting for me. So literally, all I had to do was just have really a little kinda, like, bit of money. Really kind of like kicked my roommates out. It was kind of first. Yes. You know, first she stayed in my dorm before I had an apartment, mm-hmm. and we kind of like made it so my roommate just ain't want to come back. Wow. So then she just was staying yeah. in the dorm with me, and then we ended up getting an apartment. That's when she really moved all her stuff down, and that was just, it was over with. I mean, I didn't have much, but yeah. So the clothes, pretty much. We moved here, and then, um, while that you tell your part about the fashion and how you got into that, in, that inter, uh, okay, what do you yeah. call that, internship? Yep, so I was doing fashion design at SCAD. That's what I was going to school for. Um, funny thing, I had, I never graduated. I got two quarters left of school. Damn, you said it like they tricked you out of graduation. you like, funny. Funny thing. No, because you know what? Actually, just like, I'm very transparent with my I got kicked out of school three times. Damn. Not because I, I was a stellar student, but they had rules where if you're late, 15 minutes late to class, they automatically count it as an absence. And after the third absence on the fourth one, they automatically flunk you out the class. So I'm not coming from a rich family. I worked several jobs. I used to work retail, and then I used to bartend at Esso and Libra and, diff- you know, different places. Y'all remember them clubs? Yeah. So I would literally get home <laughs> Three, four, maybe five. six. Yeah. No, like, because you got to count out. So, you exactly. know, maybe six. But then I had class at 8 a.m. I was, like, late every day. So I kept getting kicked out because I kept funking out because I was late. It wasn't even because I had A's, straight A's. So after a while, I had, like, let me just try an internship. So I was looking to, through odd internships, and I found a fashion PR one. I didn't even know what PR was. Like, I was just like, OK, this sounds cool. Puerto Rican. Right. <laughs> Basically, that's how I was thinking. I'm like, OK, fashion Puerto Rico. I want to go to Puerto Rico. Let's go. <laughs> so I go, I um, apply for it, and I got accepted. And once I started working, you know, from me working in the clubs, I knew a lot of athletes. I knew a lot of, like, entertainers, executives. So it was like a natural fit. I was like, damn, I kind of know everybody, and this is what this matches this, you know, job. So then I was like, maybe I should just do PR. And I got more into it, and then that's when I dropped out of school. And my mom was pissed to Yeah, because she, she's an educator. She's yeah, one of the day. teachers that teaches teachers how to teach. Yeah. So the fact that both of us dropped out of college, you know, didn't pledge a sorority, like, she still hurts to this day. Mm. But, um, I mean, we're... Hey, it worked out. It worked, yeah. So then um, when she was working at the PR firm at the time, it was called AW Media Group. Uh, shout out to Angela Watts. That was like our first, uh, you know, this real coach, teacher, mentor in this space. Mm-hmm. So, you know, I was just literally doing nothing. So I started volunteering just to kind of kill some time, get a ride home type mm-hmm. shit because I wasn't driving. So once I volunteered, I'm like, you know, my natural spirit, I'm a people's person. Like, I love just talking to people. I'm a social butterfly. So in PR, that's one of the biggest traits you have to have is yeah. socializing and talking to people because you have to connect your client to the public. And the best way to do that is by connecting the dots and, and really just networking. Mm-hmm. So after I started volunteering, worked my way up to intern and account exec, and then we decided uh, in 2014, we were like, we could do this shit, like, on our own. We right. know enough people, you know, we have a different view of where we want to take our business versus where we were working at the time. And 2014, we kicked it off. Yeah. When did y'all start feeling like, hey, this shit is clicking, this well, is funny working? Thing, like, we kinda, this is getting we kind of hit the ground running, but we did hit the ground running. like. Instant. It was rare. Like, m- most people, when they start their business, you know, they go through a lot of motions. It's hard to, like, obtain clients. But the we launched, like, Lou Will was my very our very first client. And then also... Shout out to that boy, Lou. Yeah, to Lou Will. Lemon Shout out to my Lou. boy. Lemon Pepper Lou. Sweet Lou. Lemon Pepper Lou. Um, a real one. Lou was our first client. He was a friend. I always did stuff for him, like, for free. And he, when I told him, like, we're launching the business... Say that like, a little cleaner. You did stuff for him for free. You know, they're comedians, so oh, they clean okay. that shit up. No, it ain't I used to, to help work. him with work and, and 
any effort that he wanted me to reach out to me to complete for him any task, I would do it for him just off the strength of our friendship. So when it came time to us launching our business, he was the first person I called and I was like, if you're my real friend, you're gonna hire us. And he was like, all right, cool, just tell me how much you want me to pay you. And it was that easy. And we've been you working ever since. I'm, I got and it, so, it reminded mm -hmm. me to hit Lou. And so, I yeah, forgot, now, you know, we went from being his, I right, I we went from being his PR, yeah. but now I manage him. So we do his PR and I manage him. So I've been managing Lou for like maybe six years now, but. Um, so yeah, that was That like, was our very first client, but then we also, at the exact same time, shout out to Shaka Zulu, yeah, Aisha, yeah. Jeff, DTP. They had put us on to, um, I, you remember when VH1 used to do those rock docs? Yes. So they did one on Atlanta called ATL Rise, um, and Shaka invited us to be like the talent liaison, so we booked all the talent, all the interviews, I mean, from Kilo Ali. My had no Ali. clue what that yeah, was Yeah, we didn't even either. know, and the, and the importance of it. But from like Kilo Ali all the way to like Future and T.I., like we booked everyone, mm, location. Like everything. Yeah, and then um, from that we actually got TV and film credits, which led to us getting Netflix as a, a client with their Hip Hop Evolution series. So like that. We did three seasons Yeah, that them. moment in that, we didn't even understand. Yeah, I love yeah. And that based was, off, that based was off relationships. Like, like what y'all do here, you get to interview people and really just listen to all the story, the whole journey, things that you might not mm -hmm. know about these people. It's like, yes, we know the songs, we know the hits, but really knowing just the entire origin story, we were just flies on the wall to so many legends and mm -hmm. icons and, you know, really got to see that project come to fruition was wonderful. So, like, the TV film space is, is just dope. Like, I just love everything that goes into just the whole filming process. Yeah. But, you know, majority of our clients being here in Atlanta, it's, you know, the hip hop, the rap mecca. So most of our clients are in the hip hop space, mm -hmm. right. um, which can be fun, mm -hmm. but it's trying at times too, because, you know, we're very, we're family. So we treat all our clients like family. We're mm -hmm. sisters, we treat everyone like family. And, you know, we started from the ground up. So we do work with a lot of, we have worked with a lot of artists and businesses from the ground up. And that can be that can be hard, you know what I mean? Like it could be really hard for um, for the client to let go of their baby and let someone else trust them to help brand them and bring their project to life. Right. So we've had a lot of different ups and downs. We've had different clients. You know, at, in the beginning we just needed money, so we were taking on anything yeah. at the time. Mm -hmm. But as you grow, like we mentioned earlier, we're going on well nine years, about to go on ten next year you get to be a little bit more selective mm -hmm. on who you work with and what you do. Cause that, you know, it's kind of more about now quality over quantity. I'd rather have two clients that are very quality and we really align with their beliefs and their right. brand mission and they have integrity rather than having 30 clients and right. You have no bandwidth. You're stretched too thin. Yeah, and they start asking for all this ridiculous ass. Man, yeah, what? you know, a lot of people really don't understand like what PR means, so they just assume. Let, let, let the people know what it means. Well, we are the liaisons between the product or entity, the brand, and the masses, meaning like the media, the audience, the consumer. So we are the storytellers. We create the story and we push it out to the masses to, you know, engage with. Um, but a lot of people often think, like, I hire a publicist today and I'm supposed to be on the cover of Rolling Stone tomorrow. And that's just never really how it works. And, like, it's, no, it's a unicorn situation. You, you have to give them time. You at least give them a day or two to get you. <laughs> a <day Right>. or <laughs> two. Exactly. You're one of the ones. Right. Like, you're one of the ones. But, no, yeah, you need, it takes time and, and you have to really understand the process in order to, like, And really, you actually have to have a tangible product. Yeah. Like, just, just because a, you have money, like, a lot of people think, okay, I might have $50,000 for a budget, but if your product or your music isn't hot there's literally nothing i can't, I, make I nobody can't want you. put a gun to people's yeah. heads and make them stream your shit right. you know we um a case study we worked with jack harlow who was this mega superstar now getting into film and tv um we worked with him and he was literally fresh out of high school just moved here mm -hmm. um a gentleman by the name a of a scientist yeah, yeah a gentleman by the name of ky he's an engineer out here worked with everyone really took him under his wings, they're both from Louisville. And he introduced him to us, again, Jack was 18 at the time. Right. And we worked his very first EP and project, like, you know, after high school. <laughs> and a lot of people weren't necessarily fucking with it. Some people were, some people understood. But um, we believed in him and his brand, and he just had the willingness to learn. A lot of people are not open to learning and being a sponge and, like, getting OGs and listening to OGs, they think they're the OG at 25. Mm -hmm. Like, you need to have somebody that's been there and done that, and you need to sit back and really 
take heed to what they're saying. So like mm -hmm. someone like Jack, I can see why he's now reached stardom right. mm -hmm. because in his early days he really wanted it and he waited his turn. He came on here and kicked it with us. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We talked a little shit. Yeah. Yeah, so we fuck with Jack. Shout out to Jack Harlow. Yeah, but you know, it's it's a lot that goes into it. So like so outside of like the PR uh, we love the event planning too. Like Atlanta's a fun place, but so we'll do anything from screenings to hosting panel discussions, album release parties. Yeah, it's um, the hub. It, it's, All kinds of shit coming Yeah, through but here. you know, even like in LA, New York, I mean, we kind of travel everywhere with it, but Atlanta's home, so we try to do as many fun, cool things here as possible because sometimes Atlanta doesn't get that love in the entertainment industry right. that like LA and New York does. A lot of people think that you need to go do a press run in L.A., but, like, there's so many people out here to, to interview with and talk to. Right. You so know you got to go through Cleveland on the press run. Right? <laughs> yeah, you know. You know you're going to get that, that one got uh, to. radio station. Right. Got to. But, no, nah, like, I, I, I really do love what we do. And, you and know. And y'all are good at what y'all do. Thank also. you. Thank you. You know, and sometimes, sometimes you get... Tired. I feel like anyone, when you do anything for a long time, you kind of feel like you're not challenged and you kind of feel like you're not getting pushed. So that's when sometimes we have to kind of rebrand in a sense, maybe add more services that we offer, learn new things. Like now we're working with clients in the biopharmaceutical space. I didn't know anything about that, you know, but we're learning and we're open to being challenged and just trying different things. That's dope, man. And you get to work with your little sister. That is... I'm like the little big sister. Yeah, so she... We're only like, what, 20 months apart? Yeah. But she's absolutely the more mature one, I will say. We're uh, like yin and yang. So I'm like the business savvy one. I'm not... I'm a tourist. I'm not as nice. I'm not as friendly and bubbly as she is. She's the people person. I'm kind of like the one that stands back on the wall and observes the situation. I handle a lot of the business contracts. I'm the mean one. I'm the one who has to come in when somebody's got to be mean. It's me. But it works, I though. I love your job, but I, I mean, people think that's me, but it's not. But I'm really cool, though, I'm, I'm you know? Not. I'm really cool. When the business, just... I'm walking out. Yeah, no, me too. It's like, that's I heard really... she wants no part. She's like, you need to go ahead and send. Like, girl, I'm like, please, please talk to them. I'm tired of being the one. Yeah. Because I'm actually really cool, but I'm, but I'm just like, I'm not a people person. She, I had to get out of my box and out of my shell to be able to mm -hmm. do this job. Like, I really, get, I had anxiety, like, having to go to events and, like, mix and mingle and network because I'm just like, I don't like doing this. But and that's I had where, to like, learn. I'll thrive. Yeah. And, like, we're both creative, so we can both come up with different concepts mm -hmm. and, you know, uh, rollouts, marketing campaigns that are dope, but that's more, like, my lane. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But, I mean, working with your sister, there's absolutely the ups and downs. Like, there's times where we're, yeah. we're literally, like, about to absolutely put hands on each other and got to walk into a meeting and just, yeah. you know, let it go. But I couldn't work with anybody else. No, no, that was, like, year five, year oh. six, seven, eight. But, um, <laughs> yeah, that, <laughs> three that days was, like, ago? last year's shit. Know. Three days ago, That was maybe? last year's shit. But yeah. honestly, though, I wouldn't, I couldn't be in business with anybody else. Yeah. Because no one is going to understand each other like we do. Right. And we're going to have each other's back. Booker T, go put that slow air car up. <laughs> no, I'm just like, <laughs> I'm gonna get with you though. Okay, please, please do. do. I get with you. Oh, yeah. He stunted on me today. It's a little a baby stunt. No, no, no it was a real. It's motivation. I take that shit personal. Then nobody even tried to warn me and get no head, so. Oh, I'm it was motivation. Payback. It's all right. I'm gonna hire y'all and plan my payback. Oh, no, we do that. We do, we do a smear campaign. Ooh. <laughs> no, we're playing. No, we Ooh. don't. We don't do smear campaign, but we do crisis, we do crisis management. Yeah. This is a payback. Oh, no, no, no. I can't do that. Get back. Mm -mm, mm -mm. I feel like I've done some things. You never know. See? Gabe, I Sometimes get, you got to release some seed. I, I right, yeah, them. talk to the mean one. Sometimes you got to feed some clips. You know. Yeah. Some quotes, some clips, you never know. You no, know, maybe spam his page or something. <laughs> right, yeah. right, right. Clips of a real call. No, there, no, so. God, no. Yeah. Holler at her. But yeah, PR marketing, that shit is, it's a lot. It's fun. And, um, you know, we're just really trying to expand this year. Like yeah, going we into are year too. 10. We're going to get with y'all on a few things, man. Oh, we're no, absolutely. To, we're 85 South, that's our family. We want to yeah. go international with it. You guys are already international. Are yeah, but I'm talking about. Doing more shows That overseas. shit like Snoop Dogg said, like, from the depths of the seas back to yeah. the block. That's what we're trying to get to. Me too. Yeah. Let's do it together. Yeah. Right. I'm with it. So look, 
What's your social media? How can people get in touch with you? I want to make sure that some of these internet people reach out to y'all. Yeah, reach out to us, but don't own. reach out to us if you're not ready. No, we got some, we got some, we got some decent motherfuckers out here. I know, I know, I know. <laughs> these I know. ain't your average, the everyday cats. Yeah, I'm know. talking about, we got people out there. Well, you guys can find us on our business page mm -hmm. at theory, T-H-E-O-R-Y underscore C-O-M-M. Hit us up on Instagram. We always are on there. We'll make sure to reach out. Just shoot us a DM. And yeah, I mean, you know, no one uses websites and yes, all that do. shit is kind of obsolete. It's theorycom.com for our website. But see, look, she be, she's going to yell at me later. We still what? got some people who watch our show that still use a mouth. Yeah. Oh, for real. Oh. Yeah. Hmm. Okay, real vintage. Interesting. Real vintage. I didn't even yeah. know, like, where do you buy them? You have them. Yeah, you have them. <laughs> you just, you just online, have had them. It's online community. Since that Apple was the big fat one that had the clear background and with the color and Shout out like to Good Day Sense Candle. Oh, yes. Carlos gifted us. He right. did. I oh, kind of stole not, them. That's in not going to be your last one. We're going to put y'all on the on the list. Oh, thank yeah. you. Yeah. Yeah, most definitely. If you're watching the, the Fruitful, Mojito, Fruitful is I amazing. I need a P.O. box or something. Oh, I don't we'll, have one. We'll yeah. We're going to get we'll get that we'll off, off camera, camera so no one but stops. But look here. I appreciate y'all stopping through here. Of course, anytime. Don't let this be the last time. Whatever y'all got coming up, promo, all of that. Absolutely. Just come in here and, and do your thing. I don't even have to be here. That's how good. Thank That's you. how much I trust you We're going to take, we gonna take over the show. The chair. Of course. Sit in good. the chair. Of course, man. Black market. Period. Period. Thank you.